Everybody wanna know why we stay flying then. Everybody on the outside, it's our confidence. Dance, 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 dance. Walk up in the room and I'm feeling good. Got my whole team with me just because I could. And it's on now. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Jarvis here, and you are with me on Jarvis TV. And yep, this is another edition of Go Do Something. And see, you may notice that I'm sitting down, which is a little different for me doing my Go Do Somethings, but I'm sitting down because I've been doing a lot of uh, travel lately, and in the travel that I'm doing, as you can see, I'm actually sitting in one of my hotel rooms, but I wanted to be able to sit down and have a good, quick conversation with everybody about today's topic. And today's topic is love. Yep, love. This week is a week where everybody around the world is, is panicking and, and they're, they're making moves. And I don't want to say everybody's panicking, that's a generalization, but people are making moves to get the best gift. The people are out there making moves to, to try to create the most romantic scene, the most, most romantic event, because they feel like on this week, this is a week where the world sets it aside to celebrate love. And there's an obligation out there for you to go ahead and produce. Now, the unfortunate thing is that the production of love during this week it's all monetary. It's hotel rooms, vacations, dinners, nights out, gifts. It's all of these various things that, that can sometimes cause anxiety on the inside of people. That anxiety comes because they feel the need or they feel the, the expectation of them to have to produce something on this particular day. Something that I've learned over time is that love is not seasonal. It doesn't just come once a year. Love is an everyday thing. Love should be in our daily routine. Love is something that we choose to do, not something that we have to do. See, I say this uh, because I want you to understand that if you don't have love, you don't have anything. It's crazy because there's a there's a uh, uh, there's an author that I love to read his books. His name is Paul. Um, maybe you've heard of him, maybe you haven't. But he wrote this book called First Corinthians. And in First Corinthians, he breaks down what love is. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. But Paul has a great understanding of what it means to actually love and actually be loved. There's even somewhere that's in this other book that I love to read. Um, and it's a book called John. It talks about how, or First John, and it's a, it talks about how um, love is God and God is love. And those who are in love are in God. It's an amazing thing when you have an understanding of what true, real love is really all about. So I'm going to read a few things to you. I'm going to give you a few things today, and hopefully this will help you get through this season. Understand this, everyone. I'm not saying not to celebrate Valentine's Day. I'm not saying not to do something special for that person that you feel like you want to do something special for. What I am saying, though, is don't feel obligated to make moves based off of a day in the year. Don't feel obligated to make moves off of a month of the year. You can celebrate love every single day of the year if you choose to. I personally choose to celebrate love every single day of the year. And when it comes to those times when you want to do something that would be the equivalent to say like a Valentine's Day gift, that can happen any day of the week, any day of the year. I just want to share that with you. I just want you to know that. So before I get to, to, too deep into that, I'm going to tell you the four types of love that I want to talk about. First type of love that I want to talk about is Eros love. Now, Eros love is a love that we're we're very familiar with. That's a sexual love. That is a, a lustful love. That love has everything to do with physical touch, physical uh, physical contact. It has everything to do with the physical side of the emotion of love. And you notice I said of the emotion of love. See, love is an action. Love the action produces love the tree, which produces love the fruit. And love the fruit is the emotions that you feel. Um, when somebody has done those things to create that response on the inside of you. You notice I said love is an action. Yes, love is an action. Love is everything that you do day in and day out. Love is your smile. Love is your conversation. Love is, is your laughter. Love is your servanthood. And that's the biggest piece is it's your servanthood. Love is and love gives and love does so many things. Now, Eros love, it's there, you know, and it's it's the most purest and most beautiful form of Eros love is when you get a husband and a wife together and they're just appreciating and honoring each other, giving each other due benevolence, you know. So that's Eros love. Now, aside from Eros love, you have Storge or Storge. That's S-T-O-R-G-E. This love is the type of love that is between a mother and her child, a father and his child, parents and their children, children and their parents. This is a love that's, it's, it's deeper than brotherly love. 
And it's it's definitely not Arrow's love. You know, it's a love that that causes you to want to protect and it causes you to want to stay connected to. That's Storge love or Storge love. Then you have another love, and this is a love that I that I really enjoy, and it's called Philea love. And this is where you get the city of brotherly love, because that's what it is. It's a brotherly love, a friendly love, a friendship love. Philadelphia is a city of brotherly love, coming from the Greek word Philea. So you have brotherly and sisterly love, which is a friend type of love, meaning that you, you love these people and you do things for them. You know, you, you admire what they do, you'll work alongside of them. Then you have the storge, storage love, and that love is the love of parents to their children, children to their parents. And then you also have the eros love, which is a, a sexual, intimate, lustful type of a love. Now, of those three, they're all very important, but the last piece of love that I wanna talk about is agape love. Now, agape love, that's really where it's at. That's when, that, now this is the type of love that husbands should have for their wives, where you love your woman 100% expecting nothing in return. It's also the type of love that wives should have for their husbands, where they love their husband 100% expecting nothing in return. Could you imagine what a marriage would look like if you loved your spouse 100% and expected nothing in return? That's amazing. That's agape love. See, agape love is an unconditional type of love. It's a love that, that doesn't say, I did this for you, so now you gotta do this for me. No, it's a love that says, I do this for you expecting no reciprocity, meaning that everything that I do is because this is how much I care about you. Unconditional love is the type of love that mixes in everything else. Unconditional love is a love that, that it just it makes its way right through the storage love, right through the, the filet of love, right through the eros love, right through any other types of love that are out there. And when it gets to the end of the line, it's still agape love, unconditional, other serving, others conscious, a God kind of love. That's why I love agape love. Like when I tell people I love you, see, I don't have to know you to know that I love you. I love you because I know that there's a God in heaven who loves me. And the great thing about this agape love is that it doesn't keep track of your wrongs. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm going to start. That's why I'm going to talk about Paul. Let me go ahead and read what my author Paul wrote. Now, this is Paul. He wrote in 1 Corinthians 13. All right. And I'm only going to read a little bit. And it says this. If I could speak all the language of the, all of the languages of the earth and of the angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clangy cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all of the knowledge. And if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, brag about it, tell the world about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing at all. See, love is patient. Love is kind. Love's not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. See, it doesn't demand its own way and say, you have to do it my way or else. It's not irritable. And it, guess what? It keeps no record of the wrongs that have been done to it. It doesn't rejoice about the injustice or, or of others, but it does rejoice when the truth wins out. See, love never gives up never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every single circumstance. I love that. See, I love that because Paul is talking about how you operate in the agape love of God, how you operate in loving people unconditionally. See, I read that and I understand why love is, is much more than just a day, and it can be celebrated any day of the year. If you need to, go back and read that on your own. Now, the last thing I have for you, because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, um, which I already have, but I have a love letter. And this love letter is from God himself. See, there's a book that's been written. It's 66 books long, and it's called the Bible. And it's a complete love letter from God to us here on earth. And you don't have to believe, trust me, you really don't have to believe that there's a God in heaven at all. But I will tell you this, I myself am a, a living testament to what unconditional love does in somebody's life. See, there's scriptures all through the Bible where, where God says that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Jesus says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. What does that mean to leave nor forsake? Well, when to leave somebody means to physically leave their presence. To forsake somebody means that you emotionally remove yourself from them. Every single person on the face of this earth is loved by God no matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter where you've been. 
The crazy thing is that we get this idea in our mind that when we mess up, that there can't be a God. Or we get this crazy idea in our mind that when we mess up, that God doesn't love us. You know, this he's not human, so he's not going to treat us the way that other humans would treat us. He has no expectation of us. He loves us without expectation. That's crazy. He loves you even though you don't believe in him. That's crazy. <laughs> he loves you even though you talk about him, you scoff at him. That's crazy. And he will chase you to the ends of the earth. But the great thing about God, and this is what people don't understand, is although he's a jealous God, he's also a God that will sit back and he will wait. He will let you know through action. See, people say, well, how is God showing us that he loves us through action? Have you looked outside lately? You ever seen a beautiful sunset? Have you stood on the line of the ocean? Have you seen the stars? Do you breathe fresh air? Are you breathing, period? Those are all actions of love. So with that, I'm gonna read this last thing and it's a love letter. And all it is is it's it's letters that I found or I, I just kind of went through the, the good book, as some people say, and I pieced together scriptures and I'm gonna put those scriptures on the bottom of the screen so you can see it. But this is the love letter from God to us, all right? Now I'm gonna read it to you. It says, hello. You may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. See, I'm familiar with all of your ways. Even the very hairs of your head are numbered. For you were made in my image. I knew you before you were even born. I chose you when I planned uh, creation. You were not a mistake. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. See, I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I'm not distant and angry, but I am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you. I offer you more than your earthly parents ever could, for I'm a perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and I meet all of your needs. I have a plan for your future because I love you with an everlasting love. All of my thoughts towards you are countless as the sands of the seashore. And I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good for you, for you are my treasured possession. And I desire to establish you with all of my heart. Delight in me and I will give you the desires of your heart, for it is I who gave you those desires. I'm able to do more than you can possibly imagine, for I am your greatest encourager. I am also a father who comforts you in all of your troubles. When you're brokenhearted, I'm close to you. I'm right there beside you. One day, I'll be able to wipe every tear from your eyes. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. I am your father. And I love you even as I love my son, Jesus. For in Jesus, my love is completely revealed. He came to demonstrate that I am for you and not against you. And I tell you this right now, that I am not counting your sins against you. Jesus' death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I had and everything that I love that I might gain your love. I'm waiting for you. I love you and always have. No matter what, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Like I said, I'm waiting for you and I love you. God. Hey, you can take it, you can leave it. But I love that love letter right there. And feel free to look up those scriptures, the ones that I have run across the bottom of the screen. I know this was a little bit longer than normal, but I wanted to make sure that I shared with you love real love so let's get out there today and for the rest of our lives and do our best to operate in unconditional love agape love others serving others conscious doing things expecting nothing in return i guarantee you, you'll start feeling it right there hey i love you guys and i mean it i don't have to know you to be able to tell you that if you're watching this i'm talking to you i love you i love you i love you i love you have an amazing week and do this for me. Get up off your butt. Get out there. Go do something. Impact the lives of the people around you in a positive way. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later.